According to a 2021 White House study, the average American taxpayer had a federal individual tax rate of 13%. On the other hand, the 400 wealthiest billionaire families in that same year paid about 8.2%. Likewise, from 2014 to 2018, the 25 richest Americans paid $13.6 billion in taxes with a true tax rate of about 3.4% on about $401 billion of income. How can individuals making billions of dollars a year pay basically next to nothing in taxes while the average American like you and I pay more? It's because they learned how to use the tax code to their advantage. And so can you. Let's go. Starting off with one that most people should be familiar with is contributing to your retirement account, so a 401k or an IRA. A quick refresher, a 401k is created through your employer that you and your employer can contribute to. And for 2024, the max you can contribute is $23,000, which also lowers your overall taxable income. An IRA is also very similar to a 401k, but it's an individual retirement fund. All the money that you contribute lowers your taxable income and the max you can contribute for 2024 is $7,000. So let's say you earn $90,000 a year and contribute the max to your 401k. Your taxable income goes down to $67,000 and your tax bill would decrease by about $5,000, which is a fair amount. So let's check out the numbers so you can see the difference. With a $90,000 salary, you will be affected by three tax rates. The first one will be at 10% and be for the first $11,600. The second will be at 12% and affect your earnings from $11,600 to $47,150. And the third rate will be from 22%, which will affect your earnings from $47,150 to $90,000. So the total taxes that you would have paid would have been $15,293. So now let's compare this to the $67,000 salary. At the 10% and the 12% bracket, you see that you pay the same amount. However, the actual savings happens at the 22% where you pay roughly $5,000 less, bringing your total to $10,233. The 401k and IRA are just two examples of the retirement accounts you can open. For more information on retirement accounts, click on the video in the top right corner where I talk about retirement accounts in more detail. Another tool at your disposal is the standard deduction. The IRS, just because, lets you deduct $14,600 if you're a single filer and $29,200 if you're married filing jointly. This is probably the most straightforward and easy option to start implementing if you haven't already. So let's do a quick recap. Contributing to your 401k can reduce your taxable income by $23,000. Contributing to your IRA can reduce it by $7,000. And taking the standard deduction reduces it by $14,600, saving you $44,600 in reduced taxable income, saving you over $10,000 in taxes or more. A more situational tax option to consider is forming an S-Corp. If you are self-employed, this is a great option for you. An S-Corp is a legal entity that you can run your business through. Any business income you generate goes through the S-Corp as well as any expenses you may incur. You will also now be considered an employee of your S-Corp and earn a set salary. What's more, any leftover money can be given to you in a form of a distribution, which is tax-free, as long as it does not exceed your stock basis. And your stock basis represents the shareholders, yours, investment in this S-Corp. So just be careful not to exceed your stock basis and you should be good. Another great option to consider is long-term capital gains. Let's say you have some investments and you want to sell them. If you sell the investments after owning it for less than one year, you will face short-term capital gains tax. This means you will be taxed at the same rate as your ordinary income. So if you're in the 24% tax bracket, you will be taxed at that rate. However, let's say you decide to hold off selling it and wait for over a year you will now be getting some serious tax advantages. For anyone making under $518,900 a year in taxable income, you will be taxed on this investment at 15%, saving you a lot of money. And number five, which is the primary residence exclusion. So this is good information to have if you currently own a home or plan to in the future. If you live in your home as your primary residence for at least two of the last five years, then you qualify. These two years do not need to be continuous and the time period starts on the day that you sell your home and then you go back five years. If you end up qualifying, then you pay zero taxes on $250,000 in profit if you are a single filer and $500,000 if you were married filing jointly. So let's say that you, a single filer, bought your home for $350,000 and then you eventually sell it for $700,000. Of your profit of $350,000, $250,000 will be tax-free and the remaining $100,000 will be taxed. No one likes paying taxes and if there are ways to legally pay less, it's in your best interest to learn how to do them and use them to your advantage. So with that, 
I'm Evan, and thanks for watching. If you liked what you just saw, then click on the video here. Also, if you haven't, like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos.